I'll show you an illustration of what we found in this compound here. Uh, very interesting things of uh, Hamas activities where we have a mix, the usual Hamas mix of terror and military compounds next to mosques, next to clinics, and most importantly, schools. And as you can see here, peeking through the wall, quite interesting. We saw a weapons HQ next to it, what appears to be a school. Shalom everyone, Lieutenant Colonel in the Reserves, Jonathan here with a daily update. Today we will be speaking about the situation in northern Gaza. I'll give you a few updates about a special Hamas compound that our troops were able to dismantle after they conquered it from Hamas and killed the Hamas operatives who were hiding there. Let's begin as always with our map and let's zoom in here on a certain area in northwestern Gaza. You see between Jabalia and Shati, we're going to zoom in on this area here and I'll show you an illustration of what we found in this compound here. Very interesting things of uh, Hamas activities where we have a mix, the usual Hamas mix of terror and military compounds next to mosques, next to clinics, and most importantly, schools. And as you can see on our illustration here, we're now going to zoom in into combat footage that Israeli troops took just after conquering this area. You can see the weapons that are being stocked here, variety of uh, combat equipment, rocket launchers, mortars, uh, other types of weaponry that they are storing in direct proximity, next door basically, to a school. These are pictures of Israeli soldiers from the Givati Infantry Brigade that uh, were part of uh, the uh, troops that uh, conquered it. And as you can see here, peeking through the wall, quite interesting. We saw a weapons HQ next to it, what appears to be a school, uh, an outdoor class of uh, uh, Palestinian schools. And if we zoom forward a bit, we can see this is a school uh, compound. Uh, it looks like a school compound, but what actually we have inside is an intelligence headquarters belonging to Hamas and other terrorist organizations. Of course, we are now going through that intelligence, learning a lot about what Hamas has and what they've been doing in that area. Uh, and here is a, an explanation a little bit about the weapons, rocket launchers, ammunition stored, all of that next to a school in the heart of the populated area in Gaza. I'll fast forward. By the way, this movie, we're going to release it, it's, it's going to be on the Twitter, uh, on our Twitter just after we finish this briefing. And you can see and run and rerun this illustration and understand what exactly uh, is on the ground and how Hamas again co-locates between the military and the civ civilian and by doing so greatly endangers the civilian population in this uh, case schools and even playgrounds for uh, for children if we go back to the map and if we zoom in on that same area you can see that there are many civilian uses of the area uh, this compound has now been taken by the IDF clear no Hamas operatives there, at least above ground, uh, and we will uh, continue our briefing. Now let's speak a little bit about Hamas. This is a video that they shared. Take a look at the guy who is uh, on his way with an RPG launcher. He's on his way to uh, strike Israeli tanks. Check out what he's wearing. That is not a uniform. That is civilian clothing. He does not distinguish himself from the civilian population. I'm sure that once he will die, maybe he's already dead. Hamas didn't show our retaliation, obviously, on their propaganda videos. But once he will meet his maker, it will be in civilian clothes. And then I ask, will the Hamas-controlled Gaza Health Ministry put him in the column of civilians killed in fighting? Or will it be the ever-elusive category of 17 to 35-year-old males which is very much missing from the numbers presented by the Hamas controlled authority. Civilian clothes, weapons in his hands, and then of course he goes on to uh, shoot towards Israeli uh, troops. 
he's not the only one in civilian clothing, so are his comrades. This uh, operative, this combatant as well, between the rubble and uh, the various activities that they do, fire towards our troops, our active defense is able to uh, uh, deal with the uh, incoming threat, and the point here being no distinction between military and civilian, abuse of civilian facilities, and the fact that they are not fighting in uniform. By the way, when Hamas terrorists invaded into Israel on October the 7th, they were all in uniform. They even had IDF uniforms, so I don't think that there was a shortage of uh, uniforms in, uh, in Hamas. Let's speak about the situation on the ground as our troops continue. We zoom out a little bit and look at the northern part of uh, Gaza. I won't point out where all of our troops are, but it would be something like this. And I am intentionally not saying exactly where we are and where we aren't, but I can say that in various locations in the northern part of the Gaza Strip and near the heart of Gaza City, our troops are deployed and are preparing to launch additional attacks against Hamas infrastructure. Again, not against the civilian population. They aren't the enemy, but Hamas is. And what we have been doing, what we have been doing for the last five days is to facilitate the flow of or the movement of Palestinians from northern Gaza, this area, along uh, the main street of Salah Hadin, to relative safety in the south. Let's have a look at what that looks like. From the air, this is an early footage uh, which we took a few days ago. You can see uh, the first small numbers of Palestinians that are walking in relative safety because we created a window of opportunity, usually between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m., allowing Palestinians to move towards the south and uh, monitoring, of course, their activity, seeing if there's any Hamas activity within this um, and uh, allowing them to proceed. This is another piece of footage that was taken by Israeli ground troops. You can see sizable numbers. According to our estimates, we are talking about between 50 and 100,000 Palestinians that have evacuated themselves from the northern part of Gaza in the last days while we're fighting using these quick humanitarian windows allowing them to move to the south. Our estimates are between 850 and 900,000 Palestinians that have already gone from northern Gaza to the south to relative safety. I want to emphasize one more thing about uh, humanitarian aid. This is aerial footage of trucks on the Egyptian side of the Israeli-Egyptian border that are on their way towards Gaza after having been checked in Israel to make sure that there's no weapons or anything that is forbidden, like fuel, to uh, provide into the Gaza Strip. They've been checked on the Israeli side and there's a steady increase in the number of trucks that are being provided to Gaza with water, food, medical supplies and other things that are needed. Here they're being checked and then the next stage will be that they go into Gaza through the Rafah crossing in order to provide uh, food and other needed things for the uh, uh, Palestinian population. There is a humanitarian zone in southern Gaza, which is where most of the aid goes to, and that is also an area where we are not striking uh, in order for there to be one safe area in Gaza. Other pictures of the aid coming in. Uh, important to emphasize, when we speak about the situation, we, f we continue to fight in Gaza. Our operations continue according to plan and according to pace. Sadly, we have casualties, but the progress is methodical and we emphasize troop security and we emphasize minimizing the effect on the civilian population. This has been our guiding principle all along for the ground operations. We will continue to pursue Hamas. We will continue to attack Hamas compounds wherever they are. And I think we have a pretty good understanding of where they are in Gaza. And we will continue to distinguish between Hamas and the civilian population. Hopefully, more and more civilians will evacuate themselves from the north to the south so that we can carry on with combat operations in the north and defeat Hamas. 239 Israeli hostages are still being held in Gaza. And until they are returned, no use to talk about anything else. We will continue to focus on dismantling Hamas for a better future for Israel and for the general region.